Hey guys, what's up? Uh, hello and welcome to another new series here at Barton Tora Gaming um, where we talk about unknown serial killers. Um, we all know about the Ted Bundy's, the John Wayne Gacy's and all that, but we're going to be talking about serial killers that I have never heard of until I did my research on this video, of course, and I'm going to go over it with you guys. And if you do know about these, and if you know more information about these serial killers and their cases, um, please give me some more information I like to read up on um, more info on these killers. Like, I try to find out much as I can, but sometimes you don't end up with a whole lot, which is fine. There's more of a story to some than there is others, but anyway... Um, this series is going to be called Unknown Killers. In this series, we're going to be talking about serial killers you've never heard of, at least me anyways, like I said before. My, my name is Krista and I'm your host. And today, we're going to be talking about Tony Abels. Tony Abels. Okay. <laughs> I'm bad at pronouncing names sometimes. Let's get into it. Tony was born in September 28th, 1954. Can you imagine having a birthday like right like right. so close to Christmas it's like do you get your birthday in Christmas or you all get it like wrapped into one <laughs> day you know what I mean anyway uh, he was born and raised in Florida now there's not a whole lot of information about him um, but about his upbringing but he was saying that he had a rough childhood uh, with him and his brother had a rough childhood his mother was you know very cold uh, she was abusive towards him and his brother now um, his first murder uh, took place when he was 15 years old uh, he was in st. Petersburg Florida it's a city off the coast Gulf Coast of Florida so many activities to do there uh, it was it's actually close to Tampa Florida as well when I was researching this and everything uh, the information, like, well, back to Tony. Uh, the first time he killed someone was in 1970. He was 15 years old. Um, he was robbing somebody, and then he murdered them. And then he, a year later, he pleaded guilty and sentenced uh, to 12 years in prison. And then he was released, and then he found a job as a construction worker, <laughs> and then five months goes by, you think, you would know, he would learn his lesson, you know, start living a normal life and everything. But no, he goes back to killing another person. Um, <laughs> but this time, it was an 83-year-old uh, Abilene, Abilene McGee, McGalls. Uh, she was in her retirement home. He went through her window and he suffocated her to death with a pillow. Um, when they found out that this woman died and was murdered, um, everyone was like, who would do this to this woman? Because she was, you know, known to be a loving person. She's never been, you know, had any beef with anyone, I guess, as you could say. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, she was 83 years old. She was in her retirement home. Um... This happened in one Tricer, Massachusetts, by breaking through her window. And, and now, uh, anyway, Valentine's Day, 1987, you know, the day of love, you know, you know, love, day of love. <laughs> but no, it was the day, um, apparently it was the day of death for Deborah, Deborah Kil Kaiser. Kaiser, yeah, Deborah Kaiser. Sorry, <laughs> like I said, I'm gonna be butchering these names. <laughs> uh, was Tony's girlfriend at the time. She was uh, sexually assaulted, and this happened in California. She was last seen uh, making a call on a payphone. Do you remember those payphones? I don't know. Like, do they even have those anymore? Like, do they even exist anymore? Because everyone has cell phones and everything. Anyway, getting off track here, sorry. Uh, she was last seen by the payphone in front of her apartment building. She w uh, she lived in, her body was found along the path near uh, Roser Park Bridge. 
she had bruises all over her arms and legs and there was blood all over her blue jeans uh, although Tony was romantically involved with Deborah this is wild you gotta love the police sometimes right he was never uh, suspected of murder or even like suspected of you know they never brought him in for questioning or anything which is weird because you, you think like <laughs> <laughs> they would question Tony considering his criminal background and everything. It's like, oh, maybe, oh, maybe it's not him. This is crazy to me. <laughs> but um, Three years go by. Uh, June 4th, 1990. Uh, Tony was in a drunken argument with his roommate, Marlene Burns. And she was also his girlfriend at the time. Uh, Tony pushed her down the stairs and and continued to beat her and kick and kick her while she was down on the ground which is crazy i mean it begs the question like what were they arguing about for him to like push her down the stairs and then started beating her and then kicking her while she's down on the ground that's crazy to me <laughs> that just sounds it just sounds awful um you know he was leaving his apartment, but uh, there was eyewitness there. Uh, they saw him wiping blood off his hands, and they already called uh, the authorities at this point, which is a good thing. They immediately arrived at uh, Tony's apartment, and uh, he was quickly arrested, and he was charged with first-degree murder, holding him without bail. In early uh, June, Tony was sentenced to death by electric chair, but two years later, he was sentenced to... Uh, life imprisonment by Justice Bob Barker. Well, this is the first episode of Unknown Killers. I'm your host, Krista, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next episode. Bye!